Hello YouTube friends. I wanted to make this little video yesterday because depending on what calendar you're looking at it's midsummer and today so today then is the 20th today is the 20th of June right there in the middle of the year the longest day the shortest night unless you're in the southern hemisphere and then it's the shortest day and the longest night which means for you guys it's starting to get nice again <laughs> so greetings to you people in New Zealand and uh, Australia and the southern hemisphere Argentina what's it like down there at the minute well, anyway up here in the northern hemisphere the sun is shining today and I wanted to make this video yesterday in the garden but it was torrential rain all day which means that the green is unbelievably lush and verdant it's really really amazing out there so I had a little look round um, I didn't really point the camera much at the weeds because lots of weeds but I did find some beautiful uh, scented flowers. Uh, the clematis is just going over now. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. But the rambling rector, the seagull, whichever uh, name you call that one, the white rose that's just by the back door here, and also by my bedroom window. So that if I open my bedroom window, and at this time of year it's always open, the, sm the scent of it wafts it into the bedroom, which is really nice. But then uh, I have this plant that um, is called, uh, I'm going to get all sort of technical on you now, it's called the Hydrangea petiolaris. I don't really know that many plant names, uh, not really, but the petiolaris is one that I particularly know because there's a programme in the UK called Gardener's Question Time where, on the radio, where people ask gardening experts questions. And I remember years ago, uh, somebody said uh, that you know that it's a very formulaic program. Hello, uh, my name is Julie, and I'm from the um, from the Christendon uh, Gardeners Club, whatever that is. <laughs> and um, they ask a question. Well, this time this woman said, um, "I want to. I want a hydrangea petularis. When should I plant it?" And the answer came. 20 years ago, which I thought wasn't a very helpful answer. However, 20 years ago, I did plant a hydrangea petularis against that wall. It's entirely in the wrong place. That plant really likes to be in the shade and it's in full sun there. My fault. Um, I, I, you know, I bought it on a whim. Would you move your tail out? Thank you. This is the sick cat. Look at her. She's great, isn't she? Prudence, they're not very well cat. It's looking good to me. Anyway, it's absolutely beautiful at the, the hydrangea now. It's got these beautiful blooms with tiny, tiny little sort of secondary blooms in them. Amazing. The elder flowers are just starting to flower with me. I'm quite far north and I've been seeing here and there on various vlogs and blogs people saying they're making elderflower champagne or elderflower cordial. My elderflowers have been in tight buds up until about two days ago. They're just starting to open out now uh, and they'll be in full uh, swing uh, next month probably. The dog rose uh, in the and the gilda rose in the hedge. That hedge was planted maybe seven years ago as little plants. Uh, two friends of mine and my daughter Martha came and four of us planted that hedge together. So it's got quite happy memories for me putting that hedge in about seven or eight years ago because it was a mess out there. And uh, these people uh, came and helped me do that. It was absolutely lovely. Well, the hedge has grown so much now that the last time my daughter was here some time ago, she said, we'll have to lay that hedge again in the spring, Mum. Uh, laying a hedge is a very particular thing. Uh, that's um, to manage hedges because most of the hedging plants in there would want to be trees. But if you are a farmer and you want to make um, stock proof fences for your cows and sheep, uh, then you would lay the hedge 
especially hawthorn and, and blackthorn and, and prickly things like that. But um, this hedge has got uh, gilder rose and dog rose in it. And it's got, um, oh, um, it's got, what's it got in it? Hazel. Oh, hazel's coming really well. A bit of, there's a rowan in there. Uh, now the rowan, that's interesting because the rowan's had all its white berries, uh, its white fruit. Uh, the, the rowan's had all its white flowers. And now I notice it's actually um, the berries are setting. So the rowan berries will be setting and, and they'll be coming red soon, which is like the first sign of autumn. <laughs> red rowan berries. But we're not going to talk about autumn. No, we're going to talk about uh, summer, mid-summer. It's just glorious out there. I also put a little picture in uh, of the, uh, I wonder if you remember me planting the um, the lettuces when they were tiny, when they were this kind of size. Well, they're massive now. It's going to have to be lettuce every meal, lettuce soup, lettuce in smoothies, lettuce everything, because the lettuce is just taking over that whole raised bed there, which is brilliant. So it was nice to have a little look around the garden this morning uh, by the back door. I call this one the back door. That one's back door, back door, I don't know. By this door here, there's a spirea, uh, which has got those beautiful um, white cascades of flowers. <sighs> Stunning. Big fuchsia by the window here, which actually does block out a lot of light, but it's lovely. <laughs> So it gets to stay. There's a lot of growth there that needs to be uh, seen to and clipped back. But firstly, it's time. And secondly, it's beautiful. So I've had a lovely little look around the garden this morning, which I'd hoped to do yesterday with you for midsummer. It's still midsummer. I always think about this week, this sort of whole time really as being very midsummery. And I'm reminded that last year I went to the Druid Stone Circle uh, the day after midsummer. Uh, so maybe I'll put a link to uh, to that video because I went to uh, the water mill and had lunch, didn't I? And then uh, that's right. I got up very early in the morning and then I went back to bed. I'll find that video. I've just remembered it now. But I drove over to um, Cumbria and went to the Druid Stone Circle, which I'm not going to do today. <laughs> uh, I'll just look at that video and remember that. OK, guys, so <laughs> there is a reason for posting today on a Saturday rather than a Sunday because <laughs> we're going to do a shop update, Rita and I, and I wanted to come on uh, the YouTubes here and tell you about it. But before I do, I just want to talk about the video I put up in, on Wednesday, which was called, uh, what was it called? Um, supporting Local Causes. Um, and it was a video about me uh, trying to reduce the amount of things I own. And uh, I was completely and utterly overwhelmed by the wonderful comments and a lot of people who completely identified with that idea of being the age we are. You know, I'm in my mid 60s nearly and um, I just own so much stuff. And also, if you make things, you just I don't know, there is no there's no sort of um, red light on on uh, on supplies, is there? It's just green light all the way. You know, a nice bit of fabric comes along or a nice bit of fibre or wool or, you know, oh, yeah, that'd be nice. I'll make that. <laughs> and so I have, consequently, I have about as much stuff as you have. And I, I did say in that video that I have an ambition to reduce it by three quarters. And there was such a lot of comments that said, good luck with that, Kate. <laughs> and my answer to that is aim high. Because if I said, oh, I just want to reduce it by 10%, what's the point of that? Aim high. And as I said in one comment, and this is one of those trite little memes that you sometimes see. Aim for the moon and when you fall, you'll still be among the stars. I think for me, I like to set goals and they might be really unambitious. They might be ambitious goals, unattainable goals. They might be unattainable goals. But do you know something? It's something to aim for. And if I manage to do half of it or a quarter of it, I'll be really pleased. However, I'm going to address that in a future video because I seem to have taken the lid off. Wow, quite a lot of people who piled in to say, I agree with you, Kate, we all have too much stuff. 
and and yes, it would be good to to benefit local causes. That was what that video was all about. Uh, I, another, I can feel another eye card coming over me. I'm forever grateful to the woman who once pointed out that if I want to point to where I'm putting an eye card, that I shouldn't be pointing here, which is where I think it should be. But left for links, she said. I can't remember her name, but if you're watching this, I'm forever grateful. I remember you every single time. Left for links. So I'm pointing left because that's where the link will be. And I'll leave a link to, um, what am I linking to now? That video about reducing. But I'm going to be making loads more because it's just it seems to have shone a light into a dark corner where we keep all our stuff. And I think it's time to get it out. Get rid of it. Um, yeah, so one of the things that one of the things you can do with your stuff, I'm going to talk about this in a future video, but one of the things you can make it into something. And as you know, I'm making this quilt for my granddaughter. That's the big piece. I'll just tip you up so that you can see the top of it. There now. That's how wide it's going to be, I think. And so now the next thing I'm doing is I'm moving out that way. So the other night I pinned out the next run. Uh, I pinned it out on this board here so that it actually refers to a part of this. And I photographed it so I know exactly where it'll go. And now what I'm doing, I'll just show you how I do this. Because these are just pinned in singly like that in the configuration I like them and then when I watch something after my supper at night I get the Netflix on or a film or something and I sew them into runs like that so one two three runs are sewn together now and I'll finish those two and then I'll sew that to that to that to that and then I'll have another block and then I'll sew that block to the main piece and so it means it's more manageable because when you're sewing the block to the main piece it's like you're wrestling with this big piece of fabric that's quite stiff because the papers are in. I'll be talking about that again soon because a lot of people ask me questions about uh, about the papers coming out, about how I sew them, why don't I sew them like this, all of that. So we'll, we'll have it. We'll switch the camera on another time when I'm doing that. However, I really wanted to talk to you today about the shop update, and Norma, you want to hear about it too, don't you? No, no, she's not bothered. You bothered? No, not really. Yes, yeah, she says I am. Tell me, Mum. Okay. So <laughs> this seems appropriate for midsummer uh, to me because um, last in the spring, I went to my friend Ted, the candle maker, and I selected a whole range of spring candles. I wonder if you remember. Um, oh, can I feel a third eye card coming over me? Maybe, uh, maybe I'll remember to put that one in as well. I love going to visit Ted. Ted's over in Cumbria and uh, he's got the most fantastic workshop and he makes the most amazing, beautiful coloured candles. And in the spring, I selected a whole load of really beautiful springtime candles for you. And uh, I've been back, you won't be surprised to hear, to get the summer candles. I'm going to show them to you now. So my first thought about summer was... Blue skies, fluffy white clouds, and green grass, or weeds in my case. So that's the colours of the outdoors of summer. And then beautiful sunflowers and um, calendula and courgette flowers, all those beautiful yellow flowers. Fantastic fuchsias. The most amazing fuchsia colours and then roses, sweet peas, um, red flowers. Oh, nasturtiums. Oh. So I've got those candles then, six pairs of candles that are all in these fantastic spring colours and they'll be in the shop as soon as this video goes live. These will be live as well. There's uh, a, an email has gone out to folk who are on the mailing list. Sometimes people get a bit disappointed when they go to the shop when I've been showing them something. And I say, these are coming live in the shop and they go over there and they're all sold out. Because I don't get many of these things. I just get a few, especially with the soap. There will be more soap, Kerry. I thought that bar of Eileen soap that I got last time was the last one. 
because Kerry was having a trouble with suppliers getting some of the ingredients she needed for that particular uh, soap. Uh, and she said last time, she said, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get any more. Well, she could get some more. So she's made another batch. She does assure me this will be the last batch of Eileen soap, but that will be coming in July because it's on her curing racks just now. So what people do, they go to the website and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And there's a uh, scroll to the bottom of the home page and there's an invitation to join the mailing list. And those people get uh, one email a month. That's all. Uh, lovely Rita in uh, Canada sends out an email that tells people about what the product's going to be. I think these are beautiful. Well, I wanted to light some candles on Midsummer's night. So at the end of this little video, there'll be a little clip of these of some of these candles alight on the table in the dark. So there's the shop update. Um, just a couple of things about uh, the shop. Um, uh, shipping. It's taking an awfully long time to get to some parts of the world, Canada particularly for some reason. Uh, and I think at the beginning of this pandemic, I think when all the places of work were closed, I mean, everything pretty much closed down, didn't it? And um, and ground to a halt. I've got this image of, of sorting offices all over the world that are just piled to the ceiling with um, stuff that hasn't been delivered yet. And, the, and, and I think, you know, it's taking a long time for people to get uh, to get on top of all of that. So if um, if your stuff hasn't arrived or well, that's, if 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 you think your stuff should have arrived and it hasn't, I'm just going to say just be a bit more patient because this is we're in a really weird global situation, aren't we? Uh, and I'm, I have confidence that this stuff will arrive. Anyway, these are going to go in the shop then. And one more heads up um, tomorrow night. Now, tonight, today's the 20th. Usually over on Patreon, I do a live stream at the end of the month. But this month at the end of the month, there's a little bit of a family thing going on with a birthday. And um, we're probably going to have a Zoom chat or something. And uh, so I won't be available to do the live stream on the day that I normally do it. So I'm doing it this Sunday instead. I've explained to you before why I do the live streams on Patreon. There are fewer people. I don't have to appoint moderators. Uh, and so um, I have explained and I do apologise every time for people who don't feel like they want to join us. Questions are coming in now for people who want to be on that live stream. And that's going to be tomorrow night, which is the 21st of June 2020. If you're watching this in five years time, I've done it. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be at eight o'clock British summer time. So if you want to pop across and uh, join that five dollar tier, uh, you can put your question in the live stream. I collate the questions about an hour before the live stream. So even quite late questions get get included as well. Right. So I'm going to uh, I did do this like the candles last night because I thought midsummer, but I couldn't do the walk around the garden uh, because of the pouring rain. So I'm going to post this now and I'll see you over in the shop. There's all sorts of other things in the shop as well. I mean, the candles will be going live now, but there's the digital download and that doesn't have any postage. That's why I like that one. And there's also, um, as always, the books and the cards as well. And I'm working on uh, something else for next month. So although there might be Kerry's soap next month, but there'll be something else as well. I've got a lot on my plate at the minute, but then that's how I like it. So whatever you're doing today, I hope you have a wonderful time. Just a small interruption there when I had a lovely FaceTime with my gorgeous daughter-in-law, who the one who lives nearby, not the one in Canada, both gorgeous, who tells me that officially Midsummer is Wednesday. I think it's all around about now. So have a wonderful middle of the year, whatever day you call it, and enjoy that fantastic energy that's out there. And I'll see you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.